The shrimp is saying, eat me, eat me. Go to your man tonight, girl, and sing this song and say, eat me. <laughs> to my channel, it's good to see you. When you see me, we see each other. I'm so excited about this recipe today, y'all. Listen, listen, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. Now this recipe can be made outdoors, but today we're not making it outdoors because I got a new weave. <laughs> okay, thank you, Keon. And I ain't got time for myself to be smelling like sopped up barbecue. Today, though, is a special day. We are going to be making reverse seared ribeye with a delicious buttery Cajun shrimp sauce. You guys have made my reverse seared ribeye recipes all across the internet. Thank y'all. And you guys know that this ribeye recipe is like literally, I'm about to use the big word, monumental. <laughs> Baby, I don't want that. Big word on y'all, okay? It is monumental. And reverse searing technique is one of my favorite ways to make steak. If you have a problem with making steak, it don't be sopped up, it be tasting like, you know, uh, a chewed up flip flop. But this way right here, this technique is gonna keep everybody from talking about you and it's gonna bring all the boys to the yard. Ow, so let's get to the recipe, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First, you wanna start with a ribeye or your steak of choice. Now listen, when you are cooking any type of protein, you always wanna make sure you let it sit out and hang out on your counter or outside of the refrigerator. What I want you to do is I want you to take it out the back. Take that little maxi pad off. Y'all know what I'm talking about, that little meat maxi pad. And I like to rinse mine a little bit, okay? I like to just, cause I don't know, Butcher may have a meat fetish or something. He'd be to drop stuff on the floor and rub it on his body. You know what I'm saying? To each his own, I ain't judging. But Lord, if that is your portion, honey, meet me at the altar with some oil. Rinse it off and pat it dry. Got my steak here that has been hanging out, all right, doing this thing. You wanna preheat your oven to 250 degrees, which we've done, okay, already. And then you wanna just season your steak and we're gonna put it on this wire rack. Now, if you've made my recipes before doing reverse searing, you know that you can find one of these little baker's rack at the Dollar Tree, Walmart, Target, wherever you like to shop. And you just need a baking sheet here, okay? You wanna put it on here so that the oven temperature kinda circulates the steak and it aerates and all that stuff. Well, I am just literally, I'm putting my my public school system education to use today. I am using a lot of big words. Aerate. You see it, okay? We're gonna take our seasoning. This is my seasoning, get that, thank you. My seasoning that's coming out, praise God. And I'm just gonna take my steak. That's a beautiful steak. You wanna make sure you have nice marbling throughout the steak. So you know I'm in California and my food stylist went to Whole Foods and got this. That's why y'all like, ooh, that steak look good. Baby, I know, cause it costs good. And it's just beautiful, darling. Like, look at the cut of that meat. You know, it's just got beautiful symmetry throughout the entire piece. Nice, thick cut steak. <laughs> I'm killing it today! <laughs> I'm killing it! You wanna take your seasoning here and just season it. Kosher salt gives you a nice crust on your meat regardless, so if you, you don't have my seasoning yet, y'all keep praying out there, okay? But use kosher salt just in general for cooking. That's what I like to use. So we're gonna sprinkle it on all sides. We're gonna turn it over, sprinkle this side. Why? Because we eat both sides. We eat both sides, hallelujah. I'm convinced that, you know, you got the hum and sing a little song while you're seasoning your meat. This looks great, okay? Because of the, the thickness and the size of it, you know, make sure you get good seasoning in there. And I'm gonna put this on my wire rack. This is great. Now we're gonna put it in our oven that is preheated, 250 degrees, okay, for about 35 minutes for medium rare. If you do want medium, medium plus. That's a new California thing, I never heard of that. I don't even know what that is, <laughs> cause I'm always hot, <laughs> period. And I'm gonna get my hands washed cause anytime you are dealing with raw meat, you wanna wash your hands and your body and everything else. <laughs> if it's coming out raw, praise God. <laughs> We're back and our steak has come out of the oven. I let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. You wanna do that with reverse searing. You wanna let it rest. But the good thing about it is that once you sear it off and take it out of the pan, you can cut into that sucker right away, baby. Okay, cut. Cut it, cut it, ooh, cut it, cut it, uh. It's a real foolproof way to cook a steak. 
And in most steak houses, they have this whole dry age thing or whatever. But let me tell y'all, when I was in my daddy's juke joint, he would throw that steak up in a deep fryer. Baby, that thing be so socked up, it's so doggone good, okay? But he would cook the best, best, best steaks my dad did. And so he actually liked the way that I made this uh, for him before he passed away. But he was the steak master. And deep frying a steak is also good. So it gives you that like bootleg, what I like to call bootleg dry age effect. This is looking good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sear it off and I'm gonna baste it with some butter and then we're gonna make that beautiful, creamy Cajun shrimp sauce. So I got my big old cast iron pan here. I like to call him Big Kenny. Rest in peace, my brother, okay? He was big and black like this right here, if y'all knew my brother. This is a 12 inch, so you wanna make sure you have a big cast iron or at least a 10 inch, depending on the size of your steak. But I got room, okay? I need room to baste that butter in there. So, medium, okay? Put that in there. I'm gonna add the sauce delicacy to the pan. And you know, over here, we're all about watching those calories. We're all about making healthy choices and watching that calorie out there. We're gonna put a teaspoon of butter in there, okay? Teaspoon. So our salted butter is nice and melted. It smells so good. I just feel like I should just have a butter baptism. You ain't gotta use no lube. Use a little butter up in that thing. <laughs> I want it to be smoking like an angry black woman at a protest. That's what we're looking for. Once they're doing that, you want to just take that beautiful steak, y'all, and just lay it down in there. Look, ooh, you hear that sizzle? Ooh, it got me. Don't do that at home. Try to get me out here. Listen, this is looking lovely. You can already smell the meatiness. You can smell that beef fat just rendering down. This is gonna be so good, y'all. Reverse searing by dry aging in a little bit in the oven, as we like to call the bootleg dry aging. You see, rather, the beef fat is rendering down, so it's starting to kind of cook in its own juices with that sopped up salted butter. <laughs> I want a medium rare, so I am going to cook it for about two to three minutes per side. That looks so good. So we're gonna cook this for about two to three minutes because I want a nice, cool, red center. And then I'm gonna take it out, let it rest and hang out and make this easy, breezy, peasy Cajun shrimp sauce. And look, if it has that nice fattiness on there, you wanna make sure that you sear that off too. Like you can do the same method on the grill. You can put it in the oven first and then you can finish it off on your grill if you want to. And it's gonna be like, mm, just so good. This is looking good. Now what I want to do is baste it with a little bit more butter. That's what I said. I don't care what y'all say out there. If you've ever had unprotected sex in your life, you risk it all more than this steak. I know y'all know I ain't lying out there. That was like a, literally a dime size. Half a teaspoon. And you want to just swirl that around. We're going to baste this steak and all those juices. Let me tell y'all, I got some fresh herbs here. We're gonna just break these and have my food stylist, Dylan, who's so fantastic, brought these for his garden. Just gonna give that nice aromatic flavor. You ain't gotta do that, but I wanted to be fancy and treat this like it's a real cooking show. It looked like a little Christmas treat on it. You can take some fresh garlic if you wanna be fancy. That's good. Now I wanna just take it out and put it over here back on my cooling rack. It's gonna take about two to three minutes to make this next sauce, so don't worry, don't fret. Look at those beautiful pieces of garlic. Get out of there. I don't need you no more. I'm treating you like my ex. I don't need you nothing from you. I don't need it. Uh, uh. You can eat it as is, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> or you put a little flavor on that thing, like we about to do. All right, and we're gonna make the shrimp sauce super easy. So I have some shrimp here. Has been peeled and deveined. You guys watched other videos. You know I always say take that shrimp boo-boo out of there. That ain't gonna be soft, too. Okay, don't nobody wanna be like, so we're gonna cook the shrimp now, okay? We're gonna start with some butter. A teaspoon of butter in our pan. I'm on medium heat, by the way. You don't wanna bit it on high, all right? And the butter gonna splatter everything, and you gonna have butter eyeshadow, and your brow's gonna be gone. All right, I'm gonna take these little lemons off, because we don't need them no more. Go just for y'all out there to make sure y'all have some beauty shots. But I wanna season them, and I just wanna kind of mesh them together, like this right here. And I wanna sear the shrimp first before I add the cream because I wanna get nice crustification on there. So yes, let your shrimp hang out too and get room temperature if you can. So I've got some butter in here. I'm gonna turn the fire up. And then we're gonna put our shrimp down. We'll lay them in there like this. You know I always say to make sure you don't overcrowd the pan. We want them to social distance. Shrimp lets you know when it's ready to go. When it easily released from the pan, has that nice crust, and you want to flip it over and cook it for another two to three minutes. Let's turn them over. Look at that. That's beautiful. 
They look so good. While that is going, I'm gonna add in the heavy cream. And you wanna just give it a nice stir. And I wanna bring this to a boil for about two to three minutes just to have it thicken up just a little bit. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and add that Cajun seasoning. And I'm gonna just chop some fresh parsley. You know, people think you done did something when you put that parsley on there, baby. Okay, to go in our sauce, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of fresh lemon because we have that seafood in there. This is good. All right, so it's time to plate this up. I've got our beautiful steak here. Look at that gorgeous melanated steak. Beautiful, look at that. You wanna take your shrimp and put it on top like that. And we're not done. We're going to take some of this beautiful, beautiful luscious cream sauce, guys, okay? <laughs> My name is Barbara, and <laughs> I love cooking. And we're gonna just pour that on top. And I'm not done. We just wanna get some of that beautiful parsley again, just to garnish, because that's how they do it at the steakhouses and stuff. Like the old school steakhouses, they be like, parsley, salty. Ling, 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 Look at there. They think you didn't do some. This is sex with chocolate. <laughs> Who else wants some of Debo? Who else wants some? Look! Oh, that looks so good. And I'm just gonna, ooh, it's so tender. Look at there, look at that. Ooh, look at there. Get some shrimp and some sauce. Look at that, look at that. Baby, I'm up here singing a Simpson song, baby. <laughs> Y'all, that is so good. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You're gonna be fiending for that thing. You got me fiending, fiending. That's so good, y'all. I want my crew to taste it so I ain't gonna eat no more, okay? This is delicious. Listen, you saw how I made it. You saw what I did. Make this for your loved one. Till next time, mates. Sex with Chocolate, Dominique, is out. Mwah! Oh, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And the recipe will be in the description box because the one is gonna write it out for y'all. Bye. <laughs> I'm convinced that, you know, you got the hum and sing a little song while you're seasoning your meat. You, you sing a little song, you want a little music in the bedroom when you get that other, now let me say that, cause kids be watching and then YouTube gonna shut me off.